Okay, what's your plan, Paul? Oh, the other thing, um, Ivan, is you start seeing um, Alchemist leave the shop about an hour after it closes, um, which would be probably close to dusk, um, like five, six, seven. Uh, they start pouring out, and there's about a dozen people who exit the shop. Got it. So by the time uh, Ivan reports back, it is uh, dark. Oh shit, I didn't finish doing the DL. That's cheesy as hell. I thought that was the very first thing I did after the session. I must have gotten distracted. What's your plan, Paul? Um, yeah, I guess probably just over here, I suppose. Um, I guess doing a once-over around the building, casually, sneakily, and then ending here and just watching. Basically, I just want to see if there's any other obvious doors. Okay, how are you going to determine if there's doors? Um, in the middle of the night, walk around a bit. Just, you know, it's an alleyway, it's public property, so he would just walk, and then... Well, go where you're going to go, then. Okay. It's part of the reason I was annoyed about not doing the dynamic lighting, is because it's uh, significant. I love the tic-tac down the hallway. <laughs> Most people struggle so hard in the uh, five-foot or the two-foot hallways. So the most obvious thing um, about the building is there's a nice big uh, loading alley in the back, but the building doesn't appear to have a rear entrance of any kind. Oh, um. Loading alley, like how does that work if it if it's not a way in? Well, it's ten feet wide, and runs between all of the buildings like an alley for loading stuff. And then they bring it to the front of the shop afterwards. But in this case, this building doesn't have access in the alley. Got it. It seems unusual, um, since there is this big, beautiful alley for bringing in um, equipment and supplies out of public view, like the whole point of having a loading area is so that people don't see what you're doing. When you drive up to Walmart, you can't see the trucks unloading goods. They're around the back in the tunnel. Mm. I think I'm going to hide and stealth in the southern alleyway there I was. Just going to move over there. Um, and he's going to try and just... Uh, what's the best way to do this? Because he wants to know if anyone goes out to this alley now. But I can't see shit, so that's probably a... What do we have? We have no light. What's the other spell? No light, uh, light, Ebonize. dark vision. Ebonize. You Ebonize. probably have Ebonize from... Yeah. The last uh, 10 rounds. Is... 10 rounds, damn. Um, I guess what we do is we would wait to hear sound, and if we hear sound, we would do Ebonize then. 
Okay, you want to give me a perception check? Sure. Nice. Uh, you hear somebody yell jubil jubilantly, and then a big bang. Uh, bang like an explosion? Nope, just like something slamming. Something um, slamming a door. Oh, uh, from which side did that come from? This or over there? Uh, in the alley to the north. It is very muffled, like you can barely hear it, even with a 26. After the bang, are they still talking, or did it go quiet? Uh, you can roll another perception check. I'm not sure. Um... Let's go up and see if I can make it out. I guess I'm going to stealth at this part. I did take fast stealth. Okay. And uh, stealth is... I stealth down the well-lit street. Uh, oh. Uh, uh, yeah, I do. Okay, well, I guess I do. Fair enough. Oh, come on. I'm sure there's an abundance of, of shadows and whatnot. I oh, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't get overly... <laughs> well, no. It's, 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 I, I already rolled, so I'm like, yeah, I guess I do. <laughs> I don't have a justification for you. <laughs> no, I just thought it was funny that the uh, sound was coming from the alley. You were standing adjacent to it, and you went the other way around the building. Oh, I thought it was this alley. No, I said at the back in to the north. Oh, okay. I I misunderstood. I, I thought when you said Northern Alley, it was just in that alley. Got it. No, I meant north of your position. Oh, oops. Can I go the other way? You can one? go back. Yeah, you can just go back to where you were. Um. Yeah, I'm going to have to cast Ebonize then to see. Okay. Uh, Since I only have 10 foot, I'm just going to let you describe it. Unless you just want me to drag my token around. Uh, yeah, you, what is your goal? Like, obviously, you can I want it. to locate the sound of where the, I want to see what's at the location of the slam. So the slam would have been around here? Yeah. And nothing's there. But you don't see anything. Can I? I'm gonna, I guess I'm going to stealth over again. I want to perceive that spot to see if there's a secret door. Okay. Okay, and as a rogue, do I get any bonuses for this? Let's see. I feel like there's a trap sense, isn't it? Uh, is that just traps or is it doors? You get a bonus to traps. You also get a oh, bonus okay. to you get a tra bonus to your saves versus traps. That's trap sense, and then trap finding gives you like half your level or something. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So nothing for this. Got it. Okay. Perception. Yeah, I think the only thing for secret doors is elves get a bonus on it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Hello. So while you are searching around for a secret door, uh, you can roll another perception check. That was the 20, unless you wanted me to re-roll. Nope, the, you don't find any secret doors, but there's a second Oh, involved. got it. Okay, 25. Um, you can hear muffled voices. Hmm. A slam came from here. There's muffled voices, jubilant muffled voices. Um, and you said a slam. So either a door slamming or 
a gate slamming or someone just slamming down some product. Mm. But okay, this is good to know. Uh, I guess I'll just stake out this area then. This is probably where the door is, so if I go, if I just sneak into this alleyway, I should be able to see if they do it again. So yeah, I'll just take out this spot. Can I listen to the voices from here or no? Like, is it, is it, it muffled to the check? Okay. Is it muffled to the point I can't make them out at this point? Well, it depends on how well you roll in your check. Well, I just meant from the 25. Uh, no, you are preoccupied with looking for a secret door, and while you're doing that, you hear some noise, you take a moment to listen, you can't really make out anything, um, it just kind of sounds like chatter. Okay, chatter in the middle of the night, that's good. It's not what we wanted ideally, but we can use this. Um, chatter means multiple people, we're thinking... Chatter is not guards, chatter is workers, probably alchemists. Okay, that gives us something. Okay, thank you. Okay. You doing anything else? Um, no, he'll just wait here to see if he can make anything more out if anything else happens. See if they open the door again. Okay. You can roll another perception check. Getting worse. Okay, never mind. So how long are you going to stake out the building? Um, Until like 5 a.m. Oh shit, you're going to spend like 10 hours here? Okay. Yeah, wanna... yeah. Uh, like he would have taken a nap during Ivan's watch, and he would have no, just gone. No, totally... I'm not worried about your sleep cycle. I just want to know how long you're going to spend here. Yeah, um... yeah. No, he's in here for long haul. Okay. You want to give me three uh, stealth checks? Eh. I'll be right back. Okay. Um, you notice, uh, while you are staking the place out, that the, uh, the city watch, um, pays a, uh, a lot of attention to this building. Like, you're hiding in the alley, and they're doing their rounds going up and down the streets, but they go around this building through the alley, sneak down the, uh, the tight alleys on both sides and go around the whole perimeter of the building. Mm. That's not what we wanted to see. Uh, they do this three times throughout the night. Is there any in like regular intervals or is it relatively random? Um, you don't really have a frame of reference since you're here by yourself sure. and you don't really have any way of tracking time. Um, you're basically just waiting till dawn. Um, probably say every three or four hours, somebody does a thorough walk around of the building. Um, the guards seem to be in, uh, trios. So one of the guards walks around the building while the other two wait on the street. Okay. okay, three hours. That's not ideal, but you know we can work with that. We that that is that is doable. And if there's a back alley, that means we have a place to unload shit, which is good. Even at night, the al the main road is lit, right? Yeah, most of the city's main streets are lit by continual flame. Okay, so we need to hope what I heard was a door. If it's a door or something, then we're safe with taking our shit out this building. Okay. 
Yeah, your biggest issue at the moment is getting into the building. Yeah, which I'm hoping Ralph will be able to solve in the morning while I sleep. As I will share what I've discovered with the group when I'm done. Okay, so in the morning, uh, Ralph, you report to work. Um, you want to give me uh, two apothecary checks and two alchemy checks? Certainly. With tools, I assume? Yep. Okay, very impressive. Um, your 17 is not um, a super awesome check, but it's definitely above average. But the rest of your checks are all phenomenal and uh, make a particular impression on uh, your uh, tutor. Uh, she is kind of, kind of looks at you. She's actually younger than you, and she's like, why are you here? Because my old boss only had me doing batch medicine. I wasn't learning anything new, wasn't trying anything new, wasn't able to experiment. And I thought a uh, professor would be able to teach me things. Okay, well, let's try something a little more um, tricky. So she'll give you a formula, and you can roll your check at minus five. One alchemy, one uh, apothecary. Are those including the minus fives? No, those were not including the minus five. So 23 and 11. Okay. Well, as she's watching you, um, she seems uh, very impressed with your technique. Um, didn't do a particularly good uh, job on the second batch, but um, not for a lack of trying. Um, See, this is what happens every time I try something new. I just don't have exper enough experience trying something new, so I end up screwing something up. Yeah, I, it's that's not, not an issue. It takes some practice to... Um, get the formulas right and get the procedure right. Not everyone does it on the first try. Um, in fact, most people botch it quite badly on the first try. Um, I'm going to get you to continue working on uh, some of this more advanced stuff, uh, but I think I'm going to uh, take my leave of you and go talk to Hoop and uh, see if we can... Uh, find something less demeaning for you to do. Uh, you're far beyond apprentice level training. Uh, so she uh, leaves you there with the uh, other workers um, and she's gone for about three hours and when she comes back uh, she uh, informs you that uh, Professor Hooper would uh, 
like to see you over at the three purple potions again. I will head right over. Okay. So you can go over there. I guess we turn the lights back on because it's daytime. Not that it really matters. So uh, you head back over there to talk to uh, Hoop. And uh, when you enter the shop, uh, he greets you warmly and uh, thanks you for coming uh, right away and uh, asks you uh, what kind of things you're interested in learning. Uh, that is a good question. Um, I hadn't really put any thought into what I wanted to learn, just something more than the basic uh, things you sell to uh, riffraff and peasants, I guess, because that was most of our business at uh, the other place, and that's all I really made. So anything more advanced would be nice. Anything that improves my uh, skills. I see. Um, your tutor had a lot of uh, very pleasant things to say about your skills. And uh, definitely thinks that you should be uh, positioned somewhere more worthy. From what she told me, you didn't have any difficulty uh, completing all of her tasks in an exceptionally timely manner uh, with absolutely no mistakes, which is uh, quite impressive. Well, thank you, sir. Why did you uh, drop out of school? I had family issues, and I needed to uh, take a job to support my family. I can understand that. That must have been very hard for you. You know, sometimes we're tough, and sometimes we're hilarious. Uh, members of my family can be extremely frustrating and extremely hilarious at the same time. Okay, well, I have um, several much higher-end items that I would like to uh, assign to you, if you're interested. Um, much more lucrative uh, processes. Um, are you... Are any of them uh, ones that you designed? Uh, no, no, these are all just uh, traditional things. Um that, uh, like I said, are just much more profitable to manufacture. Um, acids are one of the big things that uh, bring in serious coin. Um, alchemist fire, smoke sticks, tinder twigs, all that kind of stuff. Um, adventurers, they're, they're the uh, meat and potatoes of the alchemy business, so they want all kinds of little gadgets. Would well, sign me up. Okay. Well, then uh, he takes you uh, into the back. And gets you set up in the lab here. There are a couple of other alchemists here working on uh, high-end products. Um, and he... Uh, 
just gives you uh, some components to brew up some acid. We'll start with that and then we'll move you on to some of the, uh, the bigger stuff. Are any of the guys I recognize from guys that came in here the first day? No. Okay, um, you want to give me four more alchemy checks? Are these normal or masterwork tools? These would just be normal tools. Surprise sun rods are worth so little, especially since they're better than a torch. What are they, like, five gold or something? They're two gold for a sun rod. Uh, tinder twig is one gold. Acid is the, the big thing here because it's worth ten gold pieces, and it's something they go through like mad. Well, I figure with sun rods, like, what, a torch is, like, a silver, two silver, max? Yeah, I think they're a copper piece each or something stupid like that. Not really that significant. I think the big thing with a, a sun rod is just that it uh, gives you better light and it doesn't just go out, I think. Yeah, that's why I always yeah. tell you. But, I mean, that's still... You're looking at spending a hundred times more to get a sun rod than a torch. No, that that's definitely true. It's two hundred times more. Yeah, it's a copper piece for a torch, plus the oil to light it. Okay, so you get you uh, brew up uh, a few batches of acid um, when you have completed your task. Uh, Hoop comes to check out your uh, work, and he is uh, very impressed. So for now, I'm just going to be concentrating on getting better and working to make materials for them. I'm not going to be doing anything sketchy. Okay. I mean, if something happens right in front of me, obviously I'm going to pay attention, but I'm not going to be, like, searching around the place. I'm just going to concentrate, keep my head down, keep making things. Okay. Well, in the corner where um, Hoop was... There is a door to the other room back here. Um, you do not see it open at any point when you're in there. And none of the uh, other alchemists uh, paid any mind. Uh, you can give me a perception check. Well, you're working, uh, you can hear chatter in the adjacent room. Um, kind of sounds like uh, a card game going on. An unusual thing to be happening in the back room of a alchemist shop.
The other significant thing is uh, two of the three alchemists that are working back here are also making acid. And Let's drop some acid. Yeah, I wouldn't drop some acid. That would make a mess, burn holes in the floor. But you do notice that they have uh, large crates underneath the uh, workbenches that they are systematically filling up with uh, flasks of acid. The last alchemist is working on alchemist fire. I imagine, uh, if I remember right, was an acid used with uh, the processing of moonstone? Yes, it is. You have to bathe the moonstone in an acid bath, um, and it slowly uh, eats away at the outer shell. Generally, for uh, 30 seconds to a minute, um, you have to monitor it closely and uh, uh, douse it in uh, a water bath once the reaction uh, gets going and let the, uh, the first shell uh, dry out. And that's uh, the first step of um, processing that you've seen. I don't think you've interacted with it beyond that point. Correct. The other big thing, uh, just Alchemist Fire, is a big ticket item. actually quite valuable even more valuable than the acid probably not as uh, commonly used though one of those adventurer things okay so you finish out your shift um, and uh, when you're done uh, Hoop uh, congratulates you on your excellent work. And uh, he uh, wants to know if you enjoyed that more than um, your standard uh, mixtures. Yes. Um, I'm definitely learning more here and pushing myself a little harder. I, uh, I can't wait till I get to a level where you can teach me something that you came up with. And then maybe you could explain the process of how you got to this idea. Well, I have uh, many of my own formulas that I have come up with over the years um, one of the more lucrative healing solves uh, was one of my inventions that is not a particularly hard formula but uh, it is uh, a closely guarded secret because it is a lucrative uh, adventurer uh, item it's also very common uh, a lot of the street thugs uh, are very fond of it Ah, well, I wouldn't want you to teach me something you're keeping secret. I was just interested in learning uh, how you came up with the processes. For the most part, my technique seems to be okay, but I can't seem to crack into, like, being creative myself. The big thing to do is think of items that would be useful on some kind of common level and 
work with the ingredients and see what you can do to achieve that. There are a few different uh, methods you can use for creating um, alchemical um, fluids and uh, items. So you really just need to come up with something that is of interest to you that you're willing to dedicate some time to. A lot of times the research is the costly part of it. Um, you don't make any money while you're doing research. But if you would like to uh, use, the, use the lab to do some extra research, um, I'd be uh, happy to uh, accommodate you. I would much appreciate that. Maybe once I uh, get into a groove here, I will take you up on that offer. Okay. Well, uh, your production today was uh, most excellent. If you are interested, um, we can switch you off. Um... You're cutting out a bit, John. Oh, sorry, am I? I'm showing three bars. Yeah, you, you've been breaking up, but I've been getting the gist of it. Okay, well, I'll keep my eye on it. In the last few minutes, it was probably the kids going to bed. They probably called Nana while they were getting ready for bed. But they should be done that now. So, uh, if you want to do some extra training, you can do that. Um, and if you're interested in uh, moving up a tier... Um, Alchemist Fire's uh, much more lucrative product. I generally only task uh, one alchemist to it each day, but they don't mind rotating. Would you be up for that? Uh, most certainly. Okay, well, we'll uh, try you on that tomorrow. I might have to take my time on, take a little more time on those, but By all means, um, be careful. It's obviously less uh, lucrative if we waste uh, ingredients uh, with mistakes. But from what I've seen of your skills, uh, you don't make a whole lot of mistakes. So uh, are you going to take off at this point or did you want to do some extra practice? Uh, I mean, what time of day is it? Uh, this would be the end of day, like dinner time, five or six. Uh, for today, I will go home. I need to check on my family and probably eat with them. Gotta have a balanced life. Okay, we'll see you back here in the morning, and you can pick up where you left off. He shakes your hand heartily as uh, he says goodbye. I will shake it back and uh, head out. Okay, so what's your plan from here? I would tell my brothers about I went to the southern room. Um, and it looked to be just an alchemist. Um, lab and tell them, though I did hear what sounded like guys playing cards in the room next to us. Um, I assumed it was just another alchemist room, but uh, maybe it's not. It's to the, it's the room on the north end of the building. I did hear the chattering garden. that at night. If it's the room I'm thinking of, I did hear chatter at that spot at night. Um, was there a back entrance? Uh, not that I was able to see. They had uh, alchemist uh, tables throughout the room, except one corner. What was in the northeastern corner 
The northeastern corner was the door to the other room in the back, and the southwest corner is the door to the uh, main shop. Okay, so there was another door in there, um, but it, it didn't lead outside or anything. Okay. Hmm. So, I mean, you seem to have made a lot of progress. Do we want to continue with the kidnapping route? Or it looks like in a couple of days, you might be good. How do you want to deal with it? If we don't have to, we don't have to. If we, if we want to accelerate, we can. I mean, you seem to be making decent money. I mean, and you're learning a lot from the professor, right? You never got a chance to go to school. Is this something you want to continue for a bit? Uh, I mean, it depends on your goals. I mean. I will, wouldn't mind keeping working here, but uh, also how how long can we afford not to make a move? Uh, I mean, maybe if I show that I'm adept after several days, we might be I might be able to get in on uh, some of the other processes processes that they do behind closed doors, but. Uh, Right now, it seems like they're just making large quantities of acid. Like, three of us were working on acid, and only one guy was working on alchemist fire. Uh, I assume for the moonstone. That's what I also assume. Or more accurately, because somebody what? sabotaged their primary production oh, lab. Go ahead. Because <laughs> someone sabotaged their Say primary again, production lab. Uh, yes. No, that that wouldn't be it. Who would do that? Who would waste yeah, that'd all be that? Be a weird money? thing to do. Savages, I tell you, savages. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean they make moon snow here. They might just uh, be making the acid to supply for somewhere else. I guess I could go there for a couple days and see. Who comes to pick up the acid and move it? Because with three alchemists making it all day long, how much acid are they making? That's true. But on a personal level, forget what the job. Are you enjoying working with the professor and learning the craft more? It seems like it could be very helpful for you as a... Like, this think, is what you wanted to do, right? I think there's more potential here, but that would take time. For him to decide to trust me with teaching me some of his more advanced techniques. Yeah, but I mean, if you're enjoying it, like, we can spend a couple of time before we move on. I mean, might as well enjoy yourself a bit, right? Learn something from the professor you never got to learn under. I'm, I'm just saying purely for you, if, if, like, if you're interested in this, I mean, like, this is what you want to, what you want to go to school for, right? I mean, I thought wanna... we had a reason for going through all this. What do you mean? To get back at, at the Rodimus. Uh... No, no, I, I'm talking purely Ralph's profession, right? Like, he gets to learn under a professor he would have been under, right? I mean, you could we could just hold off on our plan for like a day or two, let you learn from your professor, you know, if that's something you're interested in. I think there is potential reason to do a couple days of this. Um, I don't think we necessarily have to play it out, John, but I think there's a benefit uh, unless we're in a rush to achieve something. Um, maybe a couple more days of just paying attention to what's going on in the store as I work. Do we want to kidnap someone or no? What What would be the reason to kidnap someone? To pressure them into putting out the offer to to uh, Ralph to um, to start making moon snow for them. Well, you'd have to first identify who's making moon snow and take them. Yeah, because as we just learned, it's it might not even be in this location. Well, 
Paul or uh, Ralph knows who's not making Moon Snow. If they're making acid and alchemist fire with him, then we pick one of the ones who he wasn't working with. And I think that benefits from another day or two of me being there because maybe they rotate. Maybe they're on hot, like. Yeah, he did tell you they rotate. And stuff. Yeah. That's fair. And it's not like he saw everyone so far. Someone could have been sick, right? I mean, we don't really know yet. What I do know is that the the three other alchemists that I was working with were not the guys I saw in the morning that I tried talking to. That's fair. Okay, so you want to put in a couple more days? Yeah, I'd say at least two more days. Okay, you want to give What me... time do you go in for your shift? Would be in the morning. I think the shop opens at Before late. the store's open? Yeah, just before. Okay. Okay. Okay, you want to give me uh, eight uh, alchemy checks? Oh, God. In the case of a lab, you'd need uh, item-specific tools or an entire lab. Item-specific tools, okay. So for making um, acid or uh, alchemist fire, he would need like super pre precise uh, decanting equipment and whatnot, measuring devices, all that kind of stuff. Okay, well, you botched two of them quite nicely. Uh, you want to give me a reflex save for your one? You are my hero. Yeah, well, he rolled eight checks. The probability of getting a one is pretty high. And it's a DC-20 mixture, so even a skilled alchemist is going to botch a couple attempts every day. Yeah, I actually did pretty well, because you look at, uh, like, I had to roll a six or better to make it, so there was a... 25% chance I'd fail. And you failed twice. Every day, so I actually rolled pretty well. Yeah, you rolled awesome on most of your checks. It's just the real goal is to hit the DC dead on as much as possible. Yeah. Well, and that's why I was like, well, I mean, you can. That's why probably most alchemists and poison makers just take 10. And take yeah, their time was, to make something. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that because you said you were going to be super careful. And I was like, well, we'll just roll the checks and see how it goes. In this situation, you 
you would have, by taking 10, you take twice as long. So you would have only made four batches. And the amount of profit you made off of the two extra batches easily pays for the ingredients and the damage you caused with the other two. What's your uh, luck bonus? It is... Oh, I always forget. 